Hi, I'm Dr. Incognito. In this video, we're going to investigate telescoping series. So before we get into an example that illustrates this telescoping property, let's just suppose we have a series summation n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n. Then what this symbol means, the summation from 1 to infinity, what does that mean? We have infinitely many numbers to add up. Uh, so to give that meaning, we use the concept of a limit. This means the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the summation N goes from 1 to capital N of A sub N. So we turn our infinite sum into a finite sum here, just capital N terms. N goes 1, 2, 3, 4, and stops at capital N, whereas this one goes on forever. So this one makes complete sense because it's a finite sum. And then we take the limit as capital N goes to infinity. So this infinite sum is really a limit. And these are called, these finite sums are called partial sums. So this is the capital Nth partial sum. So another way to write this is the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub capital N for the nth partial sum. <clears throat> okay, now in a particular type of series called a telescoping series, it's possible to get a nice formula for s sub n. And then we'll be able to take the limit of that formula as capital N goes to infinity. So let's look at an example. Suppose we want the summation n equals 1 to infinity of 6 over n squared minus 1. Okay, I made a little bit of an error here just by habit starting at n equals 1. If n is 1, I have division by 0. That's unacceptable. So we should start maybe here at 2 or something bigger than 1. So let's start at 2. That's good. 6 over n squared minus 1. Now, it turns out that these fractions can be decomposed using partial fractions into something that gives an interesting property when we start adding them up. So let's use partial fractions. Nothing to do with partial sums, but the same adjective here. Partial fractions, 6 over n squared minus 1. Of course, the denominator factors into n minus 1 times n plus 1. So this is going to split up into a over n minus 1 plus b over n plus 1. And then if we write 6 equals a times n plus 1 plus b times n minus 1, multiplying this second equation here by n minus 1 times n plus 1, and then letting n equal both 1 and negative 1, we will immediately determine the values of a and b. For example, if n is 1, then this is going to disappear, and we're going to get 2a equals 6, which means a is 3. And when n is negative 1, then this becomes 0, and we get b times negative 2 is 6, and so b is negative 3. So these fractions can be split n equals 2 to infinity, 3 over n minus 1 minus 3 over n plus 1. And when we start adding them, something interesting will happen. So let's start adding these fractions together. S2, I'll just call this one, S2 will be the first term. It's going to be 3 minus uh, 3 over 3 is 1. 3 minus 1. I'll use S2 here because I'm plugging in n equals 2. Let's just keep these uh, on the same page. So S3 will be 3 minus 1 plus, when you plug in n equals 3, you get 3 halves minus uh, 
three quarters. And so far, nothing interesting is happening. If you try S4, you'll get 3 minus 1 plus 3 halves minus 3 quarters plus plug in n equals 4, and you get 3 over 3, which is 1, and you get 3 over 5. And now something does happen. Here we have a negative 1, and here we have a positive 1. These are going to cancel. Let's look at S5. For S5, we're going to have 3 minus 1, let me write that back in, plus 3 halves minus 3 quarters, plus 1 minus 3 fifths, plus, so if I plug in n equals 5, I get 3 quarters, and then minus 3 sixths. I'm not going to reduce it. Uh, so now we have the ones canceling and we have the three quarters canceled. So what you'll see is that every term is going to cancel with another term that's two terms later in the series. So this negative one is going to cancel with this one, which is two terms down the line. And this negative three quarters is going to cancel with this positive three quarters, which is two terms down the line. And what we'll be left with is the first two terms and then minus the last two terms. So if we were to calculate S sub n, we would be left with the first two terms, 3 plus 3 halves, and then minus the last two terms. The last two terms are going to come from 3 over capital N plus 1, and the one before that, which would be 3 over capital N. So 3 over capital N minus 3 over capital N plus 1. So there's our formula. This is called a telescoping series because it's kind of collapsing like a collapsible telescope. Uh, S of N would have a lot of, a lot of numbers in it, uh, but they're mostly going to cancel. We'll be left with just these four. The first two at the beginning and the second, the last two at the end. Now if we take the limit as capital N goes to infinity of S sub n, both of these fractions are going to zero, and we get 3 plus 3 halves. I'll emphasize that those are zero, and so the answer here is uh, 9 halves. So the series converges, and the sum of the series is 9 halves. The series converges, and it adds up to nine heads. This is a look at the telescoping series. The fundamental idea is to investigate the partial sums. When you have the telescoping series, because of all of the cancellation, the nth partial sum will have a formula that can be determined. And then we take the limit of that formula, and if we get a number, then that's the sum of the series. Okay, so this is a little look into a telescoping series. Uh, thank you for watching.